Live from San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at VMworld 2014. Brought to you by VMware, Cisco, EMC, HP, and Nutanix. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back. We're live in San Francisco, California for VMworld 2014. This is theCUBE where we extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Our fifth year here at VMworld, broadcasting wall to wall, three days of live coverage. Our next guest is John Gilmartin, GM and VP of the Software Defined uh, Data Center Business Unit. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, glad to be here. The, nice. uh, so this is an area that maybe mainstream's not on top of, but we love to geek out on the Software Defined Data Center. That's right. You know, two years ago, uh, I, maybe it's three years, it feels like 10 years ago, in the Sierra <laughs> acquisition, and Martin's been on multiple times. Yes. And, you know, software, software virtualization really has set the agenda for what's going on in the data center. And remember, it was very much a buzzword, SDDC, Software Defined Data Center, but now it's becoming a reality. So I want to, first question, get your yep. perspective is, where is the meat on the bone right now this year with Software Defined Data Center? What is materializing right now in market that's, yep. that's available and happening? Yeah, it's been fantastic because, you know, if you think about our customers, they're all trying to move to this notion of a you know, self-service cloud, help their developers be more agile, be more productive. And uh, Software Defined, clearly the right architecture to go do that. And the last year has really brought us the last couple of pieces to go make that a reality. Obviously, network virtualization is a huge component. Delivery of NSX has really brought us a kind of leaps and bounds forward around that, and the adoption of that has been great. And then now with Virtual SAN as well, as we start to bring software defined into the storage space, you know, we're seeing a tremendous amount of interest. You take all of that, you fully virtualize your infrastructure, and then you bring management on top of that and automate on top of that. And really now we have the ability to build these self-service clouds inside the enterprise, start to meet the need of developers and you know, have this kind of very self-service, agile IT infrastructure. It's almost as if you're changing the airplane engine out at 30,000 feet with the software-defined data center, <laughs> some people said, on theCUBE. And, and it's very difficult, but I want to get your perspective of where the pressure points of innovation are coming from. Is it coming from the apps? Certainly the containers show that apps are, yep. are setting the agenda, workloads now, diversity is another variable. It used to be the, the, the infrastructure would enable, on top of it now we seem to be yep. pressing down from the top. Yes. And this dynamic provisioning environment seems to be this DevOps requirement. Right. All that's in play. So how do you, how do we, how do we talk about the innovation of the pressure point? What are those pressure points? Yeah. Well, as you point out, it's really about the applications and the requirements of applications and pushing down on the infrastructure. And in particular, as you look at kind of new style cloud native applications, which tend to be a bit different than traditional apps, they are asking different things to the infrastructure, and that's you know developers are asking to do different things than necessarily what uh, kind of traditional apps have required. Developers are looking for portability, they're looking for agility, they're looking for a different set of tooling, really. And you know, they want that experience where they can go to a website, they can go to an API and programmatically spin up infrastructure. And so that's really what enterprise IT organizations now are challenged to go do, is to go provide that type of infrastructure that can support that for developers. Technology today is you know, fundamental to the business model of every company out there. Uh, it used to just be about back office operations, now it's really about the, the marketing organization, the sales organization, product development organizations. Every part of the business depends on technology, it's changing business models, and therefore this is really what's asking IT organizations to be much more responsive and to do a lot more than they necessarily ever have in the past to support the business to move quickly. So in terms of network virtualization, so how much is that a part of this new model? Yeah, network virtualization, clearly a critical component to this, right? And you know, um, it was super interesting when we first brought out NSX last year, a lot of the value proposition was around this speed and agility. And if you look at the big cloud providers, if you look at the big financial firms, that was the kind of primary motivation initially. Uh, and we still see that a lot. It's been interesting though over the last year to start to see the value proposition for network virtualization really shift and if you look at more of the mainstream now, it's really a lot about this notion of micro-segmentation. This notion of how do I bring security from that, you know, used to just be on the perimeter, and start to bring that inside the data center. And uh, you know, that's been driving a lot of the interest, and being able to get security controls all the way down to the VM and the application itself. So, so on Friday's pre-game crowd chat, we had Steve Perry <laughs> chimed in okay. on the uh, security question. I asked, right. what are the big opportunities for startups? And he said, 
uh, security. Yep. And it's really not about perimeter security anymore, it's about something else. Could you describe what he means by that? I see perimeter security was the old way. Secure the perimeter, but people are getting in, the APIs and all kinds Protect of things. Protect the queen with a moat. Yeah, so exactly. Right. What, what does he mean by that, and why does he say there's opportunities there? Yeah, I mean, that's the traditional model of security in the data center, is you put up this big, as you said, moat around mm -hmm. the data center, and uh, you hope that no one can get over that. The problem was, if someone did, then it's all exposed on the inside, right? And so, the notion now is, well, how do we bring security inside the data center, protect those applications, but in order to do that, you know, the traditional models for doing that are just too operationally complex or too expensive. It just can't do it with physical systems. So the beauty of network virtualization is you can start to bring that in, inside the data center, bring those security controls to the VM, and do so in a, with enough automation and policy-based automation that it's operationally feasible to manage. Well, what about the flip side of that? when the queen wants to leave her castle. <laughs> How do you uh, secure that use case, if I'm, I'm making sense, right? No, I'm not sure I fully understand. So, okay, so you get the queen being the data, yep. let's say, and the data by its very nature is distributed. Yep. Right? So, um, okay, protect the perimeter, that's, that's not enough, now I can go deeper inside the, the data center yep. and provide tools to make it simpler to deploy or if I can you know, find a problem faster to, to, to solve that problem, but as the data starts to become dispersed, yep. how do I create a security model uh, and does the software defined data center help me do that that can accommodate that dispersed data, that yeah. distributed data model? Yeah, because I mean, the great thing is as you bring you know, security controls into software instead of into the hardware, then it can travel and be part of that application and actually as the application moves or the data of that application moves, you can tie those security policies to the application itself. So it's an application-centric, data-centric exactly. security model. And it's, a, and it's a platform also that you know, an ecosystem is building on top of to go bring even you know, deeper set of security capabilities on top of. So you talked about those startups uh, you were talking about a second ago. You know, it's this whole platform now that for innovation on top of that you can bring really interesting ways of thinking about new uh, models of security. So two, two years ago when Pat Gelsinger took over as the CEO, uh, EMC had a financial analyst meeting and Pat was part of that and uh, your new C CFO stood up and talked about the TAM yep. um, and gave a really good crisp presentation around that. I'm sure you're, you're seeing these slides a lot. We see them as analysts. Yeah. Uh, um, it's a big, big opportunity for VMware and a huge part of that opportunity is the software defined data center. So I wanted to dig into that a little bit. Specifically, when I look at things like TAM, I say, okay, what's the business case? Because the business case is going to ultimately determine the degree of, you know, the, the rapidity of the, do the adoption. So I wonder if you could talk about the business case for the software-defined data center. Maybe compare it to sort of phase one, which is, you know, virtualizing compute. Yep. Business case was enormous. It was a 10x, you know, value proposition. Absolutely. Is this bigger, similar, smaller? twice as big, I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. And you're, when you say business case, obviously you're thinking about it from the customer perspective. Well, it's, it's, like it's either I'm going to cut costs or I'm going to create some other kind of incremental yep. business value, either I'm going to drive revenues, I'm going to reduce cycle times or yep. reduce the lap times, time to, to value, et cetera. Yeah, it's the, it's the interesting thing is software defined data center is really kind of hitting on all of those things. One of the key motivators is really moving faster. And it's be able to reduce cycle times. You know, instead of four weeks to deploy an application, let's get it down to a couple of minutes. Let's be able to meet the needs of developers to do DevOps style uh, software development. So it's all about speed and kind of driving revenue. But on the back end, if you start to think about uh, the operating expense and capital expense associated with the, with the IT infrastructure, uh, you can start to address those pretty aggressively. You know, if you think about virtual SAN, for example, it's all about a different operating model for deploying storage for virtual machines that's application centric and VM centric. And so you can reduce the amount of time that administrators are spending managing infrastructure and get them focused on managing kind of applications. So one way to address OPEX. Or if you think about the capital expense, uh, what we see now, you've done a, you know, quite a bit of analysis, um, is by virtualizing network, virtualizing storage, you can actually get down to you know, anywhere between, I think it's 35 to 49% reduction in the total capital expense of building your data center. So really significant opportunities to reduce costs both on the operating expense side through automation, but also on the capital expense side by moving more intelligence into the, into the hardware itself. So the, just like with virtualization, if you go back you know, five, 10 years, virtualization was a very simple capital expense story. We're here now where we have a story that's well much broader than that, but still inclusive of all those kind of capital expense benefits. Okay. I got to ask you about um, competition. Just checking out what's going on around the conversations. Um, Obviously VMware is taking their claim out, Amazon on one front, uh, yeah. but Microsoft's a player in the enterprise. So what do you guys do vis-a-vis -vis Microsoft partner, frenemy, um, yeah, they're in, they're a software, software player, they got cloud, 
So how do you guys look at those guys? Are you guys too far down the stack? Yeah, so you know, with Microsoft, um, yeah, at this point we still are, let's see ourselves as really kind of leading the way around server virtualization, and that's really been the kind of core and the foundation which we started from. And we still have uh, you know, a tremendous set of capabilities there, and, and so that's kind of the starting point. And then you build off on everything we're doing around network virtualization, everything you're doing around uh, software-defined storage, really a very differentiated set of capabilities, uh, and a really unique set of capabilities for being able to build that whole virtualized infrastructure. Then you wrap a set of management capabilities on that that are in increasingly heterogeneous in nature. And we have this ability to kind of extend the data center in unique ways. You know, you know manage and automate it here, but extend it out to the cloud as well. So, pretty powerful set of kind of technologies. So, Carl Etchenbach said that uh, VMware is a, is a data center automation company. <laughs> um, should he add an orchestration to that too? So, or, or, talk about that. What is data center? automation company mean? Because obviously, he's referring to the yes, software-defined data center. Of course, um, right. And cloud certainly is automation and orchestration in the cloud, but from your in your world, what does that mean? Right, automation is, is clearly about taking a lot of the manual activities that you know an IT administrator or anybody else who's spending time with the infrastructure does, and let's run that in software. And let's not tie ourselves to operations that are specific to you know proprietary pieces of hardware. Let's get to a model where Everything can be automated through software. We can get the scalable models of deployments and operations. Uh, that's really what automation means. Automation then allows you to start to move at the speed of business rather than being tied to the kind of the infrastructure and the hardware and everything else underneath. So the other quote from Carl was awesome, by the way, great interview. He said, oh, a lot of the customers are still on-prem. Okay, I'd buy that. You guys have a, a zillion customers. Yep. Um, a lot of them on-prem. Why not private cloud? Or private cloud is today, or is private cloud the halfway house or way station to the hybrid cloud? Um, so talk about that dynamic, because you know, software-defined data center, at the end of the day, could be software driven, but at the end of the day, it's still a data center. You still got to have a data center somewhere, whether it's yeah. in cloud or on-prem. Talk about that on-premise dynamic. Yeah, so yeah, ultimately, if you think about kind of the hybrid cloud, hybrid cloud is really the combination of assets that you own inside the data center along with assets that are sitting someplace else. And uh, you know, the motivations for that are, you know, I, I want to be able to think about how do I optimize my costs. I want to think about how do I optimize my choices of placement for projects that are either short-lived, et cetera. And so there's a set of applications or projects where it makes sense to go rent capacity, but if you actually look at the total, kind of total cost of ownership inside the data center, you can actually get to much better economics by owning the assets yourself and building on top. So there's a definitely a ongoing and continued role for the private cloud but there's a very clear set of use cases for extending periodically into the hybrid cloud. So really it's, you know, let's combine both of those, let's get the both, best of both. So let's do that in a way that's seamless. So we really treat the management, the operations of everything is the same, regardless of whether it's inside or outside, right? So I mean, the buzzword bingo is all getting reset because the new, new, new names are coming out, certainly yeah. the renaming convention. Sure. Um, but I got to ask you about, um, you know, kind of specifically around, um, the suite that Pat talks about. Pat talks about the suite. So, uh, I just don't understand how that parses out relative to hyperconverge. And, and describe to the folks what is hyperconverge. I mean, that's the new buzzword. I mean, I, I know, I know hyperscale. Is it hyperscale with convergence? Is it web scale? So, what do you guys define hyperconverged as? Hyperconverged is, uh, in our mind, really kind of the coming together of prescriptive hardware definition with uh, software that's pre-installed and tightly integrated so that it's really easy to get to time to value, right? So you can get up running virtual machines in less than 15 minutes. Um, and do that all with you know, kind of a prescriptive design guidance, prescriptive kind of price understanding, and a single support organization that you can call and get support if you need help. Uh, and that's really built that's also- That's the key definition right there, up and running within- With 15 minutes, okay. right? And you know, one of the key enablers of that is you know, vSphere, another key enabler is Virtual SAN and really building all that in types of inside the, one of these kind of off the shelf. Why not call it packaged scientists. converged? Uh, Pre-packaged converged, yeah, purpose-built converged. That's, but basically that's, that's fine. That's, that's essentially, but, but that's where it's going, right? That's right. what it means. That, that's where it's headed, right? And it's, so it's really about making it easy for an organization to get up and running, get virtual machines deployed super quickly, uh, and then be able to expand that in a building block way that you know, expands very quickly and easily. John Gilmartin, who's the uh, VP and general manager of Software Defined uh, Business Unit for VMware. Um, Tell the folks out there the last word here to end the segment. Um, what's the biggest misconception of software-defined data center in context of VMware? I, I think the biggest uh, misconception is that it's something that's far into the future. The reality is this is something that people are doing today. 
technology exists, we can build this, and you know, it's, this is the way and the architecture that everyone's headed down towards. And what's the one thing that you could share that they might not know about you guys? That's a very positive thing. Well, you know, hopefully people saw all the announcements and work we're doing around OpenStack, for example, really looking to bring these types of open APIs, vendor neutral APIs on top of this software defined platform. And yeah, you know, that's a big news item for us. I want to make sure that everybody saw that and it's a big, big part of where we're headed. Yeah, I mean, OpenStack and Docker are two big, big, big relevant news pieces. Exactly. It gives the app developers essentially access to infrastructure without being infrastructure guys, right? Correct. That's fundamentally software defined data. Yeah, we, again, <laughs> helping the enterprise guys set up an infrastructure that developers can access programmatically, that's, that's the objective. John Gilmartin, Inside the Cube. We're here live in San Francisco for VMworld 2014. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back after this short break.